Today on The Breakfast, President Mohamed Buhari directs all members of the Federal Executive Council running for elective offices to submit their letters of resignation on or before Monday, the 16th of May, 2022. Also on The Breakfast, the National Executive Council neck of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, opts to throw the contest for its presidential ticket open rather than zone it to a particular region of the country. What does this make of the party's change and chances? And like always, we will be reviewing the biggest stories making headlines across major dailies in Nigeria. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa this Thursday morning. My name is Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Bupo. Welcome to The Breakfast. Messi, how are you doing today? Very well. Mm. You wouldn't ask me how I'm doing too. Well, how are you doing? <laughs> no, now you come. I'm doing very well. If I asked you how you're doing, how are you doing as well? You know, it's teeth for tat. Oh, well, uh, you, you, you felt like you don't want me to actually land with my how am I doing. I didn't know it you was were more flying. of you, how are you doing thing. I'm doing okay, I'm fine. Okay, so it feels like you wanted me to ask you how you're doing. Top trending, what's trending in Nigeria? A whole lot is trending, not how are you doing, in as much as Mercy doesn't <laughs> want to ask me how I'm doing, but a whole lot is actually happening in Nigeria. Let's start with what happened in Kano State just yesterday. A court sentenced, wait for it, a 19-year-old to death by hanging. You know, for kidnapping. No, and this person in question is the the, the suspect. He's no longer a suspect since he has been, uh, you know, sentenced. That uh, is um, the criminal's niece or nephew, right? You know, nephew, remember, nephew. nephew. It is sad. The mercy. He's just 19 years old. I mean, some people would say that he's just a youngster. I mean, he has um, his life ahead of him, and it has been caught short because of, um, you know, one singular, you know, crazy act that he did. And now his life has been cut short. He's been sentenced to, you know, death by hanging. You know, a lot of people will question, okay, fine, is it too harsh? Uh, but um, the fact is that I'm, I'm content right now because this is just a teenager and he's been sentenced to death. Uh, and it's just as though um, he didn't even live life at all. So... If you look at it, I know that a lot of people think that uh, it's very harsh and is a teenager because mm. he is 19 mm. and that's why he's a teenager. But if you also look at the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Niger, uh, when you talk about a child, I mean, an adult would become who was 18. 18 yeah. So the Constitution recognizes um, 18 as, you know, an appropriate age for an adult. So, yes, he's an adult, even though he's within his mm, yeah, teens, a young adult. Uh, yeah. young adult. But unfortunate. I think that we need to pay attention to what's going on with our teenagers. Should, not really not necessarily be. trying to stereotype or limit it to a certain region because, but if you follow the stories and the development, especially in Kanu, you find out that a lot's been going on with teenagers. That's the moral for me. So yes, this sentence has actually been put out by court, but a lot's going on with teenagers. So um, this is one. So you have uh, that the court sentence a teenager to death by hanging because he buried his nephew mm. alive. There's mm. also another story of having a teenager taking out the eye of a 12 year old you know, there's, there's a I lot. I wonder what runs, runs through their head. There's, when a, there's, also another, there's also another story from Kano emanating mm. uh, that a teenager has also been arrested or something. I, I can't remember, but it has to do with stealing the roof of uh, stealing roofs and stuff like that. But like I mentioned earlier on, we need to pay attention to our teenagers. We should. We should. And this has nothing to do with a certain region, but I think that we should be concerned. Everyone should be concerned about the happenings. And it's quite unfortunate because if you talk about the conversations that have been generated, you don't really get the buzz. The buzz that you would get, you know, naturally if it was... Um, if it was other subject, I really don't know, but it hasn't really generated all of that buzz that you would get with, you know, 
the APC and the PDP and all the issues and who's decamping and who's not decamping. Yeah, but if we constantly say that these young people are the future of tomorrow, um, then we need to do better. Well, it's a capital punishment. Some people have asked, um, do we still have capital punishment effective? Do we still use it? But if you look at capital punishment as a legal authorization to kill someone, I mean, if you kill, you have to be killed. For some punishment, it's, it's, it's a means of punishing mm. uh, someone. And the criminal code endorses all of that. So, yes, I understand, you know, the arguments that some people have put out. He's very young. I mean, he's a teen. So when you say he's a teen. No, he's committed a crime, yeah, so he should do teen. the time, you know. But I agree with you. I agree with all of that. It still goes down to the family t um, level, to the society and every other thing. Like you have rightly said, uh, maybe the society, maybe the family, maybe the churches, maybe uh, people, uh, the community, who ordinarily should be taking care of them, um, or watching out, or looking out for these young people, molding them grow. They are seemingly abandoning you know, what they should be doing. Not too long ago, we saw the sex tape, Chris and all. Those are young people. I don't know how their, their minds work these days, though. Know? For someone as young as that to even think of gorging out um, another person's eye, you know, killing, burying people alive, what, what, what doctrine uh, has he or she been listening to? How come he, has been, he or she has been so indoctrinated to the extent that uh, they do these things and they seem to have lost their humanity. So, so where do so, we go I, from here? I mean, here? when you say indoctrinated or so, you, you say the some doctrine, what doctrine? Indoctrinated, maybe the things they are watching, the things they are listening to, what they are telling them, maybe their faith, you know, it could be anything really. But I don't think, I mean, there's no faith if you look at it. If you, if you look at Islam and also mm. if you look at Christianity, mm -hmm. if you look at it fundamentally, there's no part of all of this religion that promotes violence, right? But in all of this, I think that people hide behind the religion to, to perpetrate, perpetrate evil all of this and crap, all of you know, that. to deceive people. And so when to we wake up and begin minds. to say the punishment has been put out, it's a capital punishment. Mm. And we're querying and questioning it, and some people are saying that's harsh. But what do you expect? It's part of the law, the criminal code, um, you know, it's part of it. You also have the fact that this is, this is what it is. Really, if, if he was maybe 13, then you probably say he's not. You know the age. Just a juvenile. Yeah, he's just a juvenile, but he's 19, and so 19, 18. The Constitution recognizes um, 18 as the age. What is unfortunate, like I had mentioned earlier, on, I think that we need to pay attention. I don't think, but we need to pay attention to our children. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to pay attention to the young people. We need to understand. It's it's okay, but I feel also that if you look at it, we seem to be more concerned about the wrong things. No, no politics. But what concerns you know, us? And so yeah, you're yeah, having this one who wants yeah. to become the next governor, who wants to become these, and nobody's paying attention to, to the things all that of matter. these things that happen. Because it's really shocking mm -hmm. that a 19-year-old would bury their nephew alive. Mm. Wow. So um, uh, it's, it's what has happened. And fingers are actually crossed. I mean, that has happened, but reactions have generated. But does it change anything? It doesn't, because um, he's going to be, you know, sentenced already. Yeah, he's going to be hanged. Uh, if that's a, if that's uh, has not already happened. I, I don't think so. It's just been sentenced, but the uh, the uh, the the hanging has not been done yet. But let's move on. You know. Uh, remember the super cop, uh, Abba Kerry, uh, who is facing charges for, uh, you know drug, alleged drug trafficking, and of course uh, uh, also some questions uh, to answer at the United States. Well, he was in court yesterday, and uh, something came out of all of this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll call it just uh, boldness. Uh, some people say it's impudence. Some people say temerity. You know, I don't know the English or grammar, you know. but. How can somebody think just because of him, you know, the society, you know, will just be stored or maybe crime fighting, you know, will take a different turn because he's not been around. Anyway, the, that was one of the arguments that, were, uh, that was put forward yesterday in court. And um, Kerry is uh, saying that, um, you know, criminals have been emboldened since he's been in detention. Criminals have been emboldened even before Abba Kerry was... <laughs> Uh, you know, detained and be before his case came up. So no one is indispensable. Yes, at some point he had, he had his chances. I mean, he made a mark and of course he was tagged a super cop. But that has not changed the fact that criminality and crime has not continued. So crime and criminality has been ongoing 
for a very long time. It's been going on. Before he became, uh, you know, he was tagged as Super Cup, you know, for what he did. And that hasn't really changed anything. So, I mean, Abba Carey should understand that he's not Spider-Man. He's not... Um, Superman. He's not Superman. <laughs> he's, he's not even Ben 10. Ben 10 is he? <laughs> because you watch too much. You no, watch I'm just too saying. much Pixar and um, It's not Pixar. These are, these are superheroes <laughs> when you talk about them. You know, if you want to talk about superhero, you have Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a superhero. Well, that's you your favorite. Super, it's not my favorite. But you I mean, mentioned it first. Oh, well. <laughs> why, why are we going to that <laughs> that's point? That's not the issue. It's a very serious issue, right? Yeah. So, he's not a superhero. He did a great job. He was tagged a super cop. Supposedly. Now, Nigeria, Nigeria. Then, must, I, I'm going to dispute that. He did a great job, but a lot of things came out. He was seemingly doing a great job. But at the end of the day, he was doing some other bad things. Good. So that, it brings us back to the conversation that, mm. like I rightly mentioned, you are not a superhero. You did a great job. You were tagged Supposedly. a super cop. Right. But you need to also understand that Nigeria is not... Um, one it's, man it's cannot not just solve about Nigeria's you, problem. No. Now, the problem with... Security is not a one-man problem. Mm -mm. We are still even questioning the fact that how come we have the police? How come we have um, other security apparatus that's been set out, you know, to handle issue of security? And then crime is still, you know, on top of the chart, right? Mm. So Abba Kiari alone cannot solve. I mean, if you look at the police, how the police work and security, they don't work in isolation. No, they don't. They, they, work, work, they work in as teams. Yes. yes. So it's a chain yes. um, kind of uh, organization. You have to work with a team of people to I achieve agree. that. Uh, for him to say that, it, it's not very logical whether his lawyer is making that for him. I just feel like it's one of those things trying to appeal and not appeal because he's also, he's also mentioned the fact that, oh, um, his life is also at Yes, risk. that's another thing. If your life is so even if you're because saying you that you're a super share the same cells with iPop and ESF. Should he be sharing it with me? No, I mean, if you're you a super cop. You've been given a VIP. If, if you're if you a super cop here, yes. right? If you super, one would expect that you should put out all of that super cop kind of energy gen, in the gen, prison, gen, gen. right? Yeah. <laughs> and take down anyone who's coming at you. Mm. But that's on a lighter note. But the point here is he needs to, this is not a logical conversation. It I is. Mean, it, it it's is very laughable control. for you to say that uh, because of the fact that you're being detained, crime and, crime and criminality has, has thrived. 2015 is, is still thriving. It's, mm. it's still going. And some people are saying that the reason it's thriving is because the body language of Mr. President is, is, is different. The president is not acting a certain way and not because... Because he's in detention? What's, no, what, so what it, are they it, saying? It has nothing to do with you, Abba Kari. No, and Nigeria is too big, I, I, big for you. Yes, we're giving him too much credit. You, you know, discussing that for too long, really. But then again, he's saying that um, his life is at risk because he shares the same detention cell or facility uh, with um, um, independent people of Biafra and of um, the Eastern Security Network. You know, so, Mercy, is it like uh, he feels that they are after him or what? No, but so, I don't know. I don't know how it is because I've never been to prison. <laughs> no, I pray you don't <laughs> go to prison. You don't need to go to prison. I said maybe you're going there for a work. Uh, you're working and you need to do some story on the prison. But you are not going to go to prison. You don't want to know how But I have been prison. detained unlawfully. Mercy, how long did you stay in prison? Not in prison. Jail. Detention. <laughs> So, yes, I'm not going to call it that you went to jail. <laughs> no, I didn't go to jail. <laughs> Mercy you know, was in it, jail. Uh, I wasn't in jail. For how many days? Uh, I was just uh, What did you hours. do? I didn't do anything. Oh, what did they accuse you of? Oh, um, theft, example. Mercy, clap to <laughs> Not that. I mean, it's really wrong because even as I wasn't even 18 at the time, it had to do with exams. And you were still detained? Yes, I was. Unlawful. Wow. And I knew I, I was telling the cop that, you know, when I turned 18, I would sue you for this. I said that. I remember it very well. Mm. I would sue you for what you have done because you had no right to put me behind. It's a long story. Examination. You find yourself in an examination environment, you see, and then you and were taken. The wrong set of people. You know, we're just taken away, whisked away and said uh, you were part of, I don't even, you know, for me, uh, that's why sometimes I'm, it's, it's really strange when people talk about exam malpractice. At what point do I understand that people, you have to write something and send to another person and that's cheating. But it's a long one. But it just shows you that we live in a very lawless society where people act irrational, including those who should protect our rights, you know, trample on them, take advantage of us. But maybe, I don't know if I'm forgiving it, maybe I should, you know, consider suing, <laughs> suing those maybe who arrested me. Maybe you have me. your right, um, you still have, you know, I mean, you were unlawfully detained, you have the right to seek um, uh, redress.
Well, but, let's, okay, you want to continue with Abba? Okay. I don't, I, don't, well, I think we should let him just go. <laughs> I think you're just giving him too much attention. That's just uh, in my opinion. First no, of all, fine. he feels he's some super cop that his bodies are being embodied. I, I feel that's just an affront. But, but, but a lot is going on in our system. And mm. for every other time that we talk about uh, changing Nigeria and the fact that we talk about the corruption and the rot in the system, we also need to look inwards. Uh, like I would say, a corrupt society is, uh, when you have corrupt leaders, it's just a reflection of who we are. Yes, so they didn't just fall from society, space. Have, you know, they, were, they were bred from us, from amongst us. So a corrupt society would always throw up corrupt leaders. And so when you have your leaders corrupt, when you say mm. the president is nepotistic, it just shows you that it's a reflection of who we are. We're nepotistic, we're corrupt. Whatever it is that you accuse, those at the top, it's, it's just a reflection of who you are. And until we begin to understand that it is not entirely the fault of those who are ruling, but it's just a reflection of who we are, and we take responsibility for doing the right thing. If you look at some of these climbs, for yeah. instance, we always want to make reference to develop climbs and talk about the things that happen. Those things don't happen by magic. They're not spirits who make them happen. People obey the, ru the rule of law. You respect the law. It doesn't, because of course the rule of law, the law itself is not a respecter of anyone. Not at all. And so that's why you have the principle of checks and balances and all of that. Mm. But we are not even doing that. It's just who we are. And at the end of the day, you become a president, you become a governor, you become a chairman, you become a counselor. I mean, a chairman of, you know, a council chairperson or a mm. counselor at the ward and what have you. The list is almost endless. You are becoming some leader, the director in one ministry. All of that will continue to show up. Uh, we need to take responsibility for yes, where Nigeria do. is. We need to take responsibility for where uh, the police and every agency of government is because we're just a reflection of what's going on in these places. Yes, it is. Uh, we'll take our last uh, top trend and right now. It is um, actually a very sad one because somehow we can't relate to that. Uh, uh, this person in question uh, was uh, a journalist and she was killed in the line of duty and um, right now there has been a bit of um, outrage uh, in Palestine, uh, Israel over the killing of the Al Jazeera uh, journalist Shiran Abu Akleh, you know, uh, she was shot dead um, killed by Israeli forces in the occupied uh, West Bank. The 51 year old was covering an Israeli army raid on the Jenin refugee camp when she was shot in the face by a single bullet. Well, despite wearing a um, press vest, it is really a very sad one. And yes. not going to be emotional. Yeah. But our hearts and prayers uh, with, um, you know, I mean, the journalists. What do I say now? The, the family yes. of journalists uh, who's lost their loved one because she belongs to family. I mean, she's someone's friend. She's a mother, mm -hmm. apparently. Or, you know, she's, she could be, she's everything apart from the fact that she's a journalist. But it just shows you that um, there's a lot of hazard with the job and mm. it's quite unfortunate. But we're hoping that justice will be met. Yes. As at the time of the report, um, I remember taking the particular story. There was no comment from the Israeli mm. um, government and what have you, but it is quite unfortunate. It is, it is. And... Um May God give um, the family of um, the deceased the fortitude to bear this um, particular irreparable loss. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, that um, Zor will take in on Top Trending this morning. Mercy, right? And that's it on Top Trending. We'll return tomorrow with more uh, reactions, uh, more conversations generating reactions in different spaces. And that's it. But just before um, that time out, when we come through, we will be looking at the papers this morning and bringing you up to speed with what's making the rounds across the country. Stay with us.